Hey sophomores, welcome to your junior course selection presentation with your four favorite counselors, Miss Angelina Sim, Miss Jessica Munoz, Miss Pellegrino Jackson, and myself, Miss Susan Terrio. We ask that before you continue with the rest of this presentation, that you have your transcript handy, a pen or pencil, and some scratch paper to take notes and maybe any questions you have for your counselor later. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce us all one more time because we haven't seen you guys in a while and we do miss you very much. So we have Mrs. Sim who has the alphabet A through G O M. We have Ms. Munoz who has our AVID, CARE, EL, migrant and foster students. We have Ms. Pellerino Jackson who has the alphabet P through Z. And we have me, Mrs. Terriel who has G O N through Oh, and this picture was taken pre-COVID, we promise. So over the years, we talked to you guys about what do you want to do after high school? And we want you to think ahead into the future. We want you to think about that career, that thing you want to wake up every morning and be excited to do. And then we want to work backwards and think, what do I need to know? What kind of major do I need? What kind of specialty do I have to have? in order to reach that career? And then what kind of education or training do I need to have all the knowledge for that specialty or that major? So we're asking you guys to think backwards a little bit. We wanna work back so we know where to start. So you guys have five options. You have a four-year college, you have a two-year community college, a trade or tech school, the military, or the workforce. So depending on what that career is out in the future that you want and that major specialty you need, that will dictate where you can start with your education after high school. If you're unsure, because I know it's a big question with regards to what you want to do after high school, that's okay. You can change your mind a hundred times. You can start something and then change your mind. The important thing is you guys are talking to people in your lives about it you're exploring, you're gathering information and making decisions for yourself. If you are unsure and you want to take an interest profiler, you can go ahead and click in that red box where it says click here and it will take you to californiacolleges.edu and they have a really great interest profiler that you guys can take and explore more career options and it gives so much information about that career, the kinds of majors and specialties that you need in the education that you need um, so you know where to start. So next up, Ms. Pellegrino is going to talk about the graduation requirements versus the A to G requirements. So for this portion of our, our presentation, I would like you to refer to your individual transcript that we hope that you have in front of you. Uh, because we're going to not only explain the transcript, but we're going to talk about the options for graduation versus A to G. Remember, all along while we're doing this, we want you to really keep thinking about that career, major, specialty, education, or training that we want you to start thinking about. Um, <clears throat> there are two veins that we look at when we're at school. We look at the minimum high school graduation requirements, which is the box on your left and we have the college A through G requirements, which is the box on your right. There are a lot of similarities um, and there are a few differences. We want to share with you the differences of these two. And while we're doing this, I want you to also look at your transcript. Um, the box on the right is our minimum high school graduation requirements. You'll notice the number of credits that we, on the left, excuse me, um, You'll notice the number of credits you need in each one of those areas. 40 credits in English, 20 credits in science, 30 credits in math, and so on and so forth. On the right, if you look at what the English requirements are for A through G, it's still 40. Um, math is still 30. Social studies is only 20. Fine art is 10 on the right and world languages is 20 and on the left you'll notice that fine art and world languages um, is only 10. Let's talk about math. The minimum requirements is 30 credits. Your first 20 for high school graduation requirements needs to be in the math department. For some of you that might be algebra 1 and geometry. For others of you it might be algebra A and then algebra B. 
Um, then we talk about that third year. This is where you can be unique and individualized. If your goal is to work on minimum high school graduation requirements, that third year of math can be in the math department, which could be Algebra 2, or it could be out of the math department. It could be something like business math, accounting, a combination of ag, wood, etc. When we talk about the college A through G requirements, that third year of math must be in the math department. So for example, those of you that are starting with Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 for your first two years, your third year would be Algebra 2. Similar situation with science. Your first two years, two years of science are required. Um, that's 10 each, one in a physical science and one in a life science. In your minimum high school graduation requirements, it doesn't necessarily matter what class it is in each of those. In, for high school graduation requirements, it must be a chemistry class or a, and a biology class for life science. The biggest difference that we want to make you aware of, though, is the fine art and world languages. You do not need two years of a world language to graduate from high school. Let me repeat, you do not need two years of a world language to graduate from high school. You do have to have two years if you would like to be A through G ready, meaning ready to go directly to a four-year college. So you'll notice on the right-hand side that you need 20 credits, which is two years of a world language and a minimum of one year of a visual or performing art. You'll notice on the left hand side that you need only 10 credits, which is one class of either a fine art or a world language. I don't want you to worry too much about remembering the very specifics of this because your counselor will be emphasizing this to you each time we talk about classes for each year. You'll also notice that on the right hand side in that box for A through G requirements, uh, you must have a minimum of a C or higher in all the A through G classes um, to be college ready. Now we always encourage you to go above and beyond the minimum. For many of you, you may not know yet whether or not you want to go directly to a four-year college or to a community college. We do want you to always strive to be A through G because then you will be ready to go directly to a four-year college community college, trade school, military, workforce, or any combination of those. Let's get our transcript now. <clears throat> Mrs. Terrell did a really great job at uh, making this very visually appealing and user-friendly. This is a very important document. Freshmen and sophomores, yours is going to look a little bit different. Um, you will not have quite as much information on yours because this is a running record of all the courses that you take over the course of your high school, the grades you got, and the credits that you earned. Uh, it is very important that you always have an updated copy of this to make sure everything is correct. You'll note on the right-hand side, in the green box, we're gonna go in a little bit of a different order, there are the graduation requirements as we just talked about. In this box, these are the minimum high school graduation requirements. This is not the A through G requirements. So we wanna be clear that this is your simply your minimum graduation requirement record. On the left hand side in the blue, you'll notice that that is a record of all of your classes. It starts with term one, semester one of your freshman year and goes down and so on and so forth. Um, we also always want you to make sure, like I said earlier, that you keep track of those grades, understanding what your grades were. We use our grades a lot for CSF for eligibility, so we want to make sure that those are accurate. You should always know what, how many credits you have, how many you've earned, and you'll notice under each semester that it shows you how many credits you earned for that individual semester. It shows you your GPA for that individual semester. And then underneath that, it also shows you your cumulative, which is your overall GPA, and your cumulative, which is your overall credits. Very, very important that you uh, follow that and make sure that those are correct. The next box I'd like to, you to look at is our box in red. That is our GPA. You'll notice that there are five GPAs there. 
These are the ones that we used most specifically at East Union. We use the CalGrant GPA, and I'll explain how we use each one of these in a moment. CalGrant GPA, the overall unweighted GPA, the overall weighted GPA. Those are the three. Did I say four or three? I think we just we just used three. We right? mainly use the three. We mainly use the three. The CalGrant GPA is a record of all the courses that you've taken your sophomore and junior year only. So for freshmen, you're not going to have a CalGrant GPA. You won't have a CalGrant GPA until second first semester of your sophomore year. This is the GPA that the state uses to determine eligibility for financial aid. Now, there are other requirements that they use to determine financial aid, but this is a very, very important GPA uh, because it needs to be a minimum of a 2.0 to be potentially eligible for financial aid. The next GPA is the overall unweighted GPA. For some of you, your unweighted and your weighted GPAs are going to be the same because the weighted GPA is a GPA that has classes with an extra grade point if you took an honors course or an advanced placement class, otherwise known as AP. The unweighted GPA is simply your GPA, A's are worth four, B's are worth three, C's are worth two, D's are worth one point, and F's are worth zero. So that's simply what your unweighted GPA. And again, the weighted GPA are those courses that have an extra grade point. I want to let you know that whenever someone asks you for your GPA, unless they specifically state unweighted, if the question is, what is your GPA, we encourage you to give the highest GPA of those two, which is typically going to be the weighted GPA if you have honors or AP classes. Don't worry about them questioning that because typically when people ask you your GPA, they follow up with the request to have your transcript, but it's a very transparent and valid answer to give the weighted GPA. We do not use the CSU, use the UCCSU GPA, and we do not use the academic. So don't worry about those too much. The other piece that I want to share with you in that box is your overall credits. It's underneath um, at the very bottom in the middle of that. That's the number of credits that you've earned up to date. And that number should be the same as your most recent semester completion of credits. Another piece that I want to make you aware of is the purple box. That's the counselor box. Um, for some of you, um, you haven't gotten to meet us yet because distance learning and hybrid have prevented us from being able to meet with you. So if you're unsure of who your counselor is, please make sure to reference that box to, so that you know who your support system here is on campus. Um, the other area that we want to talk to you about is the testing box. That's the pink box. Uh, for some of you, you might not have any testing in there right now. Don't worry about it. It's not a requirement. Some of you that um, go through CELT testing, you'll have your scores in there. Um, some of you will have your state testing in there. And then when you take the SAT and the ACT, your, your SAT and ACT scores are also recorded in there. Like I said, this is a very important document, kind of like your driver's license and your social security card. You want to always make sure that you have a most recent copy of this and that the information is correct because you will be using it to submit to potential scholarship opportunities and the colleges and universities. Next up, we have course selection. So we are going to talk about the required classes that you need to have for your junior year. The first required class that we are going to talk about is English. So you guys have two choices for English classes next year. There is AP English Language or English 3. If you are in Honors English this year, we would really encourage you to continue in AP English. If you feel like you can handle a little bit more of a challenge next year, AP English would be a great class for you to check out. Otherwise, you would be looking at English 3. The next required class that we have is going to be your social science class. And as a junior, you take US history. So you've got two options. There is regular US history or there is AP US history. If you have been successful with your English classes and your world history class this year, AP US history might be a really good class for you to challenge yourself with next year. If you're not feeling quite up to the challenge yet, then U.S. History would be the class that you would select. 
The next required course we're going to be talking about is math. So we've got lots of different options here with math. Remember that the graduation requirement is 30 credits of math with at least 20 credits in the math department. If you've completed either Algebra A and B or Algebra 1, the next math class you would take would be Geometry. If you've completed Geometry, the next level of math you would take would be Algebra 2. If you have completed Algebra 2, then you have three different options. There's Pre-Calculus, AP Statistics, or Finite Math. Please refer to the course catalog to see the specifics about these three classes. Then at the bottom, we have Business and Personal Finance and Accounting. Business and Personal Finance and Accounting count as your third year of math for graduation only. These are math classes that are in the business department, but you get some math credit for them. These two classes do not count as the third year of math to be an A to G student. Let's talk electives. This is one of my favorite areas to talk with with students because this is really the meat and potatoes where students can really individualize their high school plans and start supporting those plans for life after high school that Mrs. Terriel talked about earlier. What your career interests are, therefore what do you need to major in or what do you want to specialize in, what kind of education or training do you need. Um, are you going directly to a four-year college? Are you not sure? Are you looking at the trade schools? What kind of classes do we have available here that can, can support those, those potential career interests? We have electives in a lot of area. Most people don't realize that many of our math classes are considered electives. For, for example, AP Statistics, that's a math elective. AP Calculus A, B, AP Calculus B, C, those are elective. Spanish 3, French 3, Spanish 4, French 4, all elective. Advanced Band, elective. Um, electives are, that's a word that is really um, misunderstood. And we really like you to use these elective classes to build on those um, interests that you have. Let's look at the next so slide and see how we can use uh, these electives. <clears throat> Earlier I talked with you about, for example, the math requirement. Three years required for graduation. Uh, three years in the math department are, are needed if you want to be college ready. We would like you to consider using electives like AP Stats, Pre-Calculus, Finite Math, to build, um, use those math electives to build on those minimum graduation requirements. Classes like a math or a world language or our sciences, physiology, astronomy, AP chemistry, AP environmental science, all those classes. Maybe you have a career interest of going into the engineering or science vein. We want you to use those, those types of electives to build on those career choices. What if you're interested in an ag-related field? Wow, our ag department has an unbelievable number of elective classes. Basic ag, power ag, ag equipment and construction, art and history of floral culture, advanced floral, um, and so on and so forth. I'm not even mentioning all of them, but we really want you to look at these electives and make purposeful choices. And it kind of makes school a little bit more fun beyond the have-tos. This is more of the can-do area. The other thing is for some of you, Maybe you just like, uh, want to find out more about a hobby or an interest. I had a student that loved PE and all he wanted to do was take team sports. Every single term, team sports, team sports, team sports. After his two year PE requirement, he absolutely can. As long as he's taking all the required courses and we can fit it into his schedule, he could take PE every single term if he wanted to. We really want you to look at these electives and choose wisely and individually because that's what they're there for, to build on your skill set. You might want to know, be interested in where we can find out more about um, these electives and that's in our MUSD High School course catalog. There's a link on this PowerPoint that's going to direct you and it'll give you information about the classes. It's going to tell you what prerequisites, which are a prerequisite is a class that's required to take before you take a class. So for example, if you're an amazing artist, 
um, and you want to take color and design, then you will need to take intro to art first and then advanced art so that you can get to color and design. Same thing about if you're an ag person, if you want to take ag equipment and construction, basic ag and power ag are the prerequisites before you can get into that ag equipment and construction class. Um, what you want to do is, if you're interested in reading more about the courses, and we hope that you do, please click on that icon that says 21-22 High School Course Catalog, and the classes are all listed in there by, by department. Um, make sure that you look into this before you fill out your course selection sheet that we'll be doing further on, because like I said, this really makes your high school plan very, very individualized. How to complete your course selection form. You will go to the East Union High School website, and you will go under Counseling, and you will look for the tab that says Course Selection. This is the page that you will see once you have clicked on Course Selection under the Counseling tab. As you can see, there are step-by-step -step instructions we will begin with part one. Part one, click on the grade that you will be in next school year. So juniors, you will click on 12th grade course selections. Sophomores, you will click on 11th grade course selections. Freshmen, you will click on 10th grade course selection. And eighth graders, you will click on ninth grade course selections. You have now downloaded your course selection form. And now it's time to fill your form out. So I have a copy here of a course selection form. It might look a bit different than what you have in front of you, but don't worry. The information that I'm going to go over, it's the same information on every form. This form is a PDF fillable form. You will be able to type in the form. Please make sure that you fill your name, ID number, the date, post-graduation plan, and that you click on your counselor's name. You will then go to the required classes, and you will click on the required classes that were reviewed earlier. You will just click next to the box of the class that you are going to take next school year. You will then go on to elective classes. You will choose eight elective classes and number them one through eight in order of preference. Number one will be the class that you have always wanted to take, or maybe it's a class that you know you have to take. You will put a one next to that class. Then you'll have your second choice. You will put a two next to the class that is your second choice. And you will put a three a four, a five, and so on until you get to number eight. Number eight will be the class that you choose if it's the only class available at each union and you're willing to take that class. Remember to save your PDF form. It is very, very important that you save your form so that you can upload it into part two. Please remember where you saved your PDF form and what you titled it. So an easy way to remember it is if you are completing the senior uh, form, you can just save it in under senior course selection form. So now we are done with part one. We've downloaded our course selection form and you have filled it out and you have saved it. So now we are going to part two, submitting your form. Part two, submitting your form. You will complete uh, the required information on this form, very basic information. And then you will need to use your MUSD.net email to submit it. So students, we are expecting you to use your uh, school email to submit your course selection. So once you're done filling out the necessary information, you'll get to number seven, upload your course selection form. You will click where it says upload file and you will um, attach your uh, saved PDF form here 
and you will click uh, submit. Once you click submit, you are done. You've submitted your course selection, so congratulations. Uh, you will receive an email uh, stating that you really have received your course selection. If you have questions, please contact your counselor. You can send uh, your counselor an email or a message through Teams, or you could request an appointment. Please feel free to reach out. Once again, here are the East Union counselors with contact information below. Um, we highly encourage you to contact us if you have questions. We, we miss you guys, and um, if, please don't hesitate to, to reach out.